In this section, we will see how to assess for an ear problem and then check for malnutrition and anemia. Ear infections rarely cause death, but they are the main cause of deafness in developing countries. An infection can spread from the ear to the brain, causing meningitis. To assess for an ear problem, first ask the main symptom question. Does the child have an ear problem? If the mother replies that there is an ear problem, assess the child further. Ask. Is there ear pain? Ask. Is there ear discharge? If the mother says yes, ask. For how long? Ear discharge is a sign of infection. The duration of the ear discharge is important when deciding whether to treat the child for acute or chronic ear infection. Next, look for pus draining from the ear. Look closely into each of the child's ears. Next, feel for tender swelling behind the ear. You should feel behind both ears like this to determine if there is tender swelling of the mastoid bone. The mastoid bone is the large bone behind the ear. Tender swelling behind the ear may indicate a deep infection of the mastoid bone. Both tenderness and swelling must be present to classify mastoiditis. That completes the assessment for an ear problem. The health worker would classify the ear problem, then check for signs of malnutrition and anemia. It is very important to check all sick children for signs suggesting malnutrition and anemia. Look for visible severe wasting. To look for visible severe wasting, remove the child's clothes. Look for severe wasting of the muscles of the shoulders, arms, buttocks and legs. The hips look small compared to the chest and abdomen. Look at the child from the side to see if the fat of the buttocks is missing. A child with visible severe wasting may still have a normal appearing face and a large or distended abdomen. This child has visible severe wasting. A child with visible severe wasting has marasmus, a form of severe malnutrition. Next, look for Parma pallor. Pallor is an unusual paleness of the skin and is a sign of anemia. Children with severe Parma pallor have severe anemia. To see if a child has Parma pallor, look at the skin of the child's palm. Hold the palm open by grasping it gently from the side. Do not stretch the fingers backwards. This may actually cause pallor by blocking the blood supply. Compare the color of the child's palm with your own palm or with the palms of other children. This child has severe palmer pallor. The palm is so pale that it looks white. This child has severe anemia. If the skin of the child's palm is pale, but not white, the child has some palmer pallor. This child's palm is normal. It is a healthy pink color. This child 
has severe pallor. Anemia occurs in children who are not eating foods rich in iron, or who have malaria, hookworm, or whipworm. Severe anemia can be life-threatening. Next, look for oedema of both feet. To determine if a child has oedema of both feet, the health worker uses her thumb to press gently for a few seconds on the upper side of each foot. If a dent results in both feet, the child has oedema. This child does not have oedema. Oedema is an important sign of kwashiorkor, a form of severe malnutrition. This child has kwashiorkor. This child has oedema. The oedema or swelling is due to an accumulation of fluids in the child's tissues. If the child has not already been weighed and his weight recorded during this visit to the clinic, the health worker weighs the child. A child's weight for age is another indicator of malnutrition. A child with a very low weight is malnourished. He needs to have his feeding assessed. Determine the child's weight for age using a growth chart. Next, the health worker checks the child's immunization status. Assess the child's immunization status. Decide whether any immunizations are needed today and when the child should come back to the clinic for their next immunization. If the child is well enough to go home, the child should go home with his immunizations up to date. Finally, assess any other problems the child has. This completes the assessment of the sick child aged two months up to five years.